Greetings, hello. So you've just caught me making up a sort of batch lot of food ready for the week because I've got work and I don't want to be caught on the, on the her. Basically, I want to be prepared. You've missed a little bit because I was just on the face side to my sister, but I have made a lentil, carrot and cabbage stock thing. So basically I cooked lentils in the chickeny stock that I had left over from the chicken drumsticks that I made in my last video. So I didn't want that flavour to go to waste. So that is now lentils, definitely going to be living on that for the next week because look, there's loads of it. Also been cooking up some greens here. So there was some of that um, sprouting broccoli, tender stem broccoli it's called, with some of the last of the courgette just in lard and salt. And then over here, Pièce de la Résistance made a couscous salad. So it's just couscous with bits of kale, bits of coriander. I had some pistachios, which is a bit bougie, isn't it? But I did in the cupboard. So I just got a few, put them in a plastic bag and smashed them up. And some raisins. And that is such a nice little light salad. Oh, good. They're leftovers. And this is how we are looking. Meal prep. So that one's going to be chicken. Then I've got four steaks I'm defrosting. So I could go steak, 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 steak. Although it's going to be a bit samey this week, but what can you do? And then here I'm thinking white fish, white fish. What do you think? I'm actually quite excited by the prospect of this food. Mm. All food is fab if you season it. This stuff is going in the freezer. The last of my carrots chopped up and two little portions of that couscous because I don't want it to go bad. Still no sign of the furry one called Jack. I'm a bit concerned. But the show must go on. I need to use up some of these ingredients and prep for the week. This mozzarella ball was frozen and I've defrosted it. So it'll be interesting to see what that looks like when I've undone it. And I'm thinking croutons salad, ham, boiled egg, olives. So this little pack came with stuff. Came with like a ranch dressing, some little croutony things that are supposed to taste like smoky bacon and some little bits of cheese. So I'm not gonna put that in there or that in there. I'm gonna save those. Got the tiniest little bit of ham left, save. But I am gonna do the egg and the olives. I can't actually open these olives. You have to me be the UK's strongest man. I'll have to do without. I just thought I'd prep the bread a little bit, that little nub that I had left over. So I've managed to get two slices out of those, which aren't too hard, but then I'm gonna aim to harden up these guys for croutons, breadcrumbs, etc. Guess who's back? Back again. Thank you, bye-bye. Shady's back, eating some fish. Thank Guild, he's back. Just finishing off my leftover curry. And then I've been whipping this up. It's been very hot today. So it's my lentil mixture with various proteins. So there's some little steaks. There was some white fish, steak, fish, steak, steak. Couscous, different grain, different grain, same grain. So I'm going to attempt to freeze some of this, but I don't know whether I should refreeze the steak because it was frozen, oh, and so was the fish. Okay, look, we're just gonna bung it in the fridge and have to eat it quick. Morning, I'm just having some leftover rice pudding for breakfast. Um, Jack, not good. As you know, yesterday I said I thought he was had been in a fight the night before because when I woke up, he was next to me in bed and he looked really timid and there were fur clumps of his fur all over my bed. And he disappeared again and I thought, oh, he's not going to come back. But I found him eventually sitting outside and he wouldn't move. He was just sat on the ground. And I was like, come on, Beanie, you've got to go see. And I was trying to like lure him in with treats. And he finally come in and he was really limping really badly. So I'm like, oh no, what on earth has gone on? I reckon he's broken something or been like this for a whole 24 hours and just been lying under a bush somewhere. I carry him upstairs. I get his litter tray out he hadn't used for ages. Um, 
sort that out. Food and water are all in a room, are in the vets out of hours. They're like, look, you could bring him in, but it's £250. And honestly, I would advise, unless he's like not breathing, just wait until first thing in the morning and ring the actual vet. So I'm just waiting now for them to open so I can ring them. And then randomly this morning I came down and I thought Beanie was trying to get out because I closed the cat flap. I've got one of those chip cat flaps that only lets Jack in. And I heard, I heard him pouring at the cat flap and I thought, we can't want to go out, he's not well. Anyway, went down there, weren't Jack. Some massive, big, fluffy, angry black cat somehow had got in through that cat flap and couldn't get out because obviously I'd locked it from the inside. So Jack couldn't get out and it was going mental at me. I was like, oh my God, what on earth is going on? So I let it out, loads of trauma. Now we're about to go to the vet. Here's the patient himself, Limpy Limps. Hello, Limpy, how you feeling? It's his left paw. Limpy, come on. Excuse me, not happy. I'm not letting him out. You've probably got a broken leg. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's about the eighth time you've been attacked. You're not meant for this life, Bean. Too many predators out there in this neighbourhood. Beanie. I don't really know what to do, apart from get him to the vet. Should I keep him in forever? Should I move? Should I not panic? Bean. I don't know what's wrong with him. Are you looking at a cat out there? What's going on? I can't see anything. Okay, I've just rang them. And they've got an appointment at Hoppers 2 today, which is great. Sorry, Jack, he's crying because he wants to go out, but he's not going out. Um, tough love. So he obviously didn't think it was a massive emergency to like get him in there for like nine, which I'm taking as positive. So now I've got to go and sort my car out. That needed to be in the garage at eight. It's now one minute past eight. What a day. I'm having this as a little pre-lunch, about half past ten, snack. A little bowl of chopped ham salad with homemade croutons. And Beanie's crying because I won't let him out because we're going to the vet soon. No, you've got a dodgy paw. Cats and cars, two of the most expensive things in my life, unfortunately. Unlike my food bill. Mmm. Very good. Hello, it's now Wednesday evening. I thought I'd give you a complete update. I took Beanie to the vet. He hadn't broken anything, but he had been bitten by another cat. Apparently that is quite dodgy. So the vet gave him some antibiotics and some anti-inflammatories and sent him on his way. And that cost me £102, which I didn't think was too bad. In my head, I always go the worst scenario and think, oh, £500. So, fine. That is what it is. Then I went to get my car from the garage. I thought it was just an oil light that was on there and they were like, mm, no, I think there's a bit of work here involved and you should probably investigate getting a new one. So I had a feeling this might be coming. I've had that little car for eight or nine years. Longest relationship I have had is with a car. But I love it though. I do love my little car Winona, her name is because the number plate looks like rider so Winona rider but my accountant's been on for a little while saying I should probably get an electric car a used one through the business but again I don't want to spend a lot of money I'm going to investigate I'll be able to update you on this in short order and also some very exciting news received today which I think I can finally tell you about I'm going to be on the telly tomorrow tomorrow night at 8 p.m. on Channel 5. I'll tell you more about this and how that happened because I live in Norwich, miles away from any media people. In my next video, have a lovely evening. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad it's not 35, 40 degrees anymore. We're now down to about 22.